Good day, folks. Everything new under the sun. You're looking at the timeline of the return of the Lord. Uh, this is my keynote related to that. And uh, specifically, you're looking at, uh, well, let's let's move actually here. Hold on a second. Let's move up to this image here. And for many years, uh, literally years now, I've been speaking about 2028, and I think it's a very interesting year. Now, I was uh, likening um, uh, basically the lifespan of Israel uh, from 1948, and they turn 80 years old, or they turn 70 years old in uh, 2018. They turn 80 years old as a nation in 2028. So I thought there was some significance to that, and many people believe there is significance to that. And I thought, well, that must be when the Lord returns. That must be, you know, you come off that seven years, and the seven-year period starts 2021. Well, it's the year 2023, and I don't believe at all that the uh, tribulation, uh, the first, you know, the seven-year period, I don't believe that that has started yet. I believe the seven-year period is broken into two different pieces, the tribulation and the great tribulation. If you read Revelation chapter 6, you'll see a reference to the great tribulation. And the great tribulation happens after the four horsemen of the apocalypse, right? And the four horsemen of the apocalypse, of course, bring war and famine and pestilence and economic collapse, etc., so what it may indeed be, and we're kind of, uh, you know, growing in understanding together uh, as we see the history of the world play out and Bible prophecy play out, it could indeed mean um, that, yes, Israel gets to 80 years old, um, but that's, uh, that's kind of the trigger point where then that seven-year period uh, starts even, or maybe, maybe that is indeed the midpoint of the seven-year period. So it could be that as well. And if that was the midpoint, you know, where the wrath of God uh, comes um, at the middle, uh, uh, at the midpoint of that seven-year period, when Satan sits on the throne in the third temple, that's God's red line, and then his wrath comes in Revelation chapter 6, um, uh, then, um, you know, that, that the, the seven-year tribulation uh, could start uh, uh, any time now. Uh, so, you know, uh, if it's 2028, you're looking at uh, midway through 2024, maybe next year. I don't know. I don't know where that seven-year period sits. I know that the, the wrath of God comes at the midpoint of the seven-year period because that's the abomination of desolation. That's where God says, okay, that's it. But the first three and a half years are a tribulation period. And I believe we're going to be here for that. And I believe that that is, um, <clears throat> that is um, uh, you know, for the Jewish people. That is consequence for them. That's kind of the last three and a half years where they have to decide, okay, am I going to be uh, for God or against God? Am I going to recognize Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or not? And they will have that last period and there will be great persecution to the Christians and to the Jews uh, during that time. But we're, we're approaching that very, very quickly. So it seems to me that maybe the wrath of God doesn't come until... 2028 and that is kind of the middle point of that seven-year period that would make sense to me because he he lets you live a full life he lets israel live as a nation for a full period of 80 years um if i go to if i go to uh 2028 end.com let me pull that one up here and Psalm 90, so this is where it comes from, Psalm, Psalm 90, verse 10. The days of our lives are 70 years. And if by reason of strength, if God blesses, if God gives strength, you may get an extra 10 years. Now, this isn't written in stone, but this is a, a general, um, uh, um, you know, saying uh, to suggest that, you know, maybe uh, the years of Israel will be 80 years. And maybe that's a timeline that God is kind of putting on it. It says, uh, yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Now, it would make sense that if 80 years, uh, Israel as a nation being 80 years, and then the wrath of God falling, we're not going to be here for the wrath of God. So the very latest this could be would be 2028 uh, for that midpoint of the seven-year period because we're not going to be around for the wrath of God. Um, so maybe we fly away during that 80th year, uh, you know, right around the time when the abomination of desolation is happening, or, 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 you know, just after the abomination of desolation happens. That's God's red line. He lets a lot of bad things happen on the earth before that in the first three and a half years. I remember the four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding during that period of time. So that, that could be the timeline we're looking at. I don't know. And I've always said that, uh, you know, I don't know. You need to read your own Bible and come to an understanding yourself. But again, as we're 
Uh, nearing the uh, end, well, you know, we're in the middle of 2023 uh, right now. We're heading into 2024. Could the mid, uh, you know, uh, June, July, August 2024, could that be the kickoff of the seven-year period? I don't know. But it's interesting, isn't it? And you do have to keep moving that timeline if we're not raptured or if the four horsemen of the apocalypse haven't ridden yet. It looks like they're gearing up because things are getting very bad in the world. Uh, but I don't believe they're started. Now, as it relates to... Um, Matthew 24, it speaks about uh, the things that are going to be happening uh, just before uh, the return of the Lord. His disciples were asking Jesus, and he says, Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But this is not the end. The end is not yet, it says in verse, verse 6 right there. The end is not yet. We'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. The end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That's just the beginning. That speaks to me of the beginning of the tribulation period, or even maybe prior to that, the beginning of things going bad in the world. And then the four horsemen of the apocalypse kind of are spoken of in verse 7 there, uh, kind of described you know, exactly what's, what's happening there. So do we see wars and rumors of wars? Well, we know about Israeli Iran. We know uh, about uh, China, Taiwan, United States. We know about North Korea. We know about Ukraine, Russia, and NATO. And those are big situations. But look at this. Uh, look at this article. Uh, this is. Uh, let me see if I can move that. Uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, all Africa war. So you talk about wars and rumors of wars all around the world. Is the whole world heading to war? Apparently, this ex-presidential aide thinks it is. So ECOWAS is going against the, uh, uh, the coup folks in Niger. And uh, this ex-presidential aide is saying that uh, Niger, uh, you know, what's happening there risks continental conflict. So now you have conflict, you know, almost in, on every continent of, of the world, uh, or at least those continents being involved in some sort of war. Uh, U.S., Canada involved with NATO, uh, you know, against Russia and U Ukraine there. And so we have war everywhere. And, you know, Africa, you know, there's lots of little uh, civil wars happening there. But now we have a, a continental or a continent-wide war that they're, be, that they're uh, suggesting could be coming. So that's interesting. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. This is just the beginning, remember. This is not the end. The end is not yet. This is the beginning of the sorrows that are to come. So let's see what else is happening. Well, Russia moves to boost uh, army near Europe after NATO expands. So NATO is, you know, putting 10,000 soldiers on the borders in, I think it was Poland. And, uh, well, now they're gearing up. Uh, he singled out the militarization of Poland and said the entry of Finland and Sweden to NATO membership would be seriously destabilizing for Russia's security. Taking into account the armed forces of European countries, about 360,000 service people are stationed in the immediate vicinity of the borders of Russia and its ally, Belarus. Russia is gearing up. NATO is gearing up. Everybody is gearing up. It's really a, you know, will you blink sort of situation in Ukraine uh, where it's really United States against Russia. And they're trying to see who blinks first, who's going to pull it, you know, push the nuclear uh, button first, who's going to bring in the big guns and actually go to all out war with cyber attacks and, um, you know, economic uh, weapons of mass destruction, uh, etc., and, you know, it's, it's a game of chicken between those two superpowers. And uh, it's building up, and it's getting to a point where it, they're not going to be able to stop it. A new AI laser system to guard U.S. capital. So now they have a laser system guarding the U.S. capital. The United States is getting geared up for war, just like Moscow is getting air defense systems all figured out, and they have been in the last couple months. We're starting to hear media reports, mainstream stuff, uh, that the U.S. military is starting to fortify um, you know, uh, uh, significant strategic places around the United States. Likely the Canadian government is doing it as well. But the, their movements were hidden until now, but now they're getting more and more obvious as we get closer to war. The closer you get to war, the more obvious the military decisions and movements and 
uh, and if, you know training that they do, uh, it will be more obvious to us because they can't hide it anymore at that point. There'll be such big operations going on and them getting ready. And we'll start hearing it in the mainstream media news more and more. Again, as the government starts putting it, its propaganda com- campaign to get the public on side with whatever um, they're interested in doing. And so this is the state of the world. U.S. suicides hit all-time high last year. Is this what Satan wants? Does he want to kill as many people as possible? Yeah, absolutely. Through suicides, through fentanyl, through world war on every continent. This is what Satan wants to do. He is gearing all this up. He is pushing for this. This is what he wants. Abortion, um, you know, the whole uh, LGBTQ uh, stuff going on. Um, he doesn't want any more humans born, and that's why he's confusing people. Remember, Satan is the father of lies, the father of confusion. So, you know, are you surprised when kids are confused? That's a direct result of Satan being active in this world and getting uh, stronger because he knows his time is short. He's doing whatever he can. Here's another indication, you know, the Four Horsemen of of the Apocalypse, uh, that speaks of economic collapse coming down the pipe. And uh, in the U.S., another example, U.S. credit card debt tops $1 trillion. Overall consumer debt, little changed, it says. And, of course, U.S. consumer debt is is nothing compared to um, uh, American debt as a nation. Uh, What is it, nearing $30 trillion? Is it thirty? Do I have the number right? Maybe someone can fact check me there. It's a massive number. And they're printing money out of thin air. They don't have that wealth. We don't manufacture things in the West anymore. Uh, I mean, there is some manufacturing, but not compared to what China's doing. So this is all, uh, you know, there, uh, the, you know, pr- uh, the government of the United States, the government of Canada, the government of Britain and, and NATO nations, they're all spending their credit cards. They're all tapping their credit cards like crazy. And so are U.S. Uh, consumers, you and I, civilians, uh, who are you know just trying to get by, uh, trying to do what we can to make ends meet, and uh, so this is increasing, increasing. So this is uh, fascinating when we look at again this idea of the parable of the fig tree, and Psalm ninety, you know, pattern equals prophecy to, to the Jews, and this idea of seventy years, you know, that's the natural life that kind of that God gives people. You may live a little bit less, you may live a little bit more, um, but generally seventy years. And But by reason of strength, if God gives strength, especially to the Jewish people as a nation, 80 years, that 80 years is up uh, in 2028. And uh, we, so we have it here. And so that could be, again, this could be the midpoint. Remember that the start of the seven-year period uh, is not the rapture, in my understanding, in my estimation. Uh, you know, after, you know, from me reading the Bible, reading the Word over and over, I don't see the start of the seven-year period and the peace deal, I don't see that as the rapture event. I think we'll be here through that. I think the red line, because Christians have been through all sorts of persecution and far worse times than we're living in now uh, throughout history. Uh, What is uh, the the kind of red line for us and for God is, uh, you know, the evil in, in men's hearts continually. And the abomination of desolation, the the abomination where the Antichrist sits on the, uh, you know, the throne in the third temple, the rebuilt third temple, uh, in Jerusalem, and declares himself to be God, and that's the absolute most blasphemous thing, and uh, and so God uh, comes back at that time, and that's when His wrath comes. That is the time we get raptured out just before the wrath of God falls not before the tribulation. We get raptured out before the great tribulation, but not before the tribulation. Go read Revelation chapter 6. You'll see a reference to the great tribulation. And everything happening before that is therefore not the great tribulation. It does not describe the four horsemen of the apocalypse as the great tribulation. That's simply tribulation. And we uh, will have to go through tribulation. Whether it's big or small, some might get off, you know, quote-unquote, easier than others. Some may have a real easy life, and some may have a real hard life. Some may lose their lives for uh, uh, for the kingdom of God, uh, for the gospel of Christ. Um, some of us may simply be persecuted, or our bank accounts are frozen, or we're put in jail, or you know we're limited in doing things, or whatever, uh, or we're call we're called haters and hate speakers or bigots for the name of Christ because we speak the truth, and people don't want to hear the truth. Satan is deceiving them so well, confusing them so well, that no one wants to hear the truth anymore. They consider it, uh, again, hate speech and wrong speak. 
and the government is fully on the side uh, of Satan. You know, it seems to be completely influ influenced by Satan, influenced and infiltrated. I think you would agree in, in the United States, and I would say that in Canada as well, as our, our prime minister was actually, uh, you know, he, in, in my province for, for the Pride Parade. And, uh, and so, you know, that stuff is on display, and it's wrong. The Bible says it's wrong. I'm not suggesting it's uh, any worse than any other sin because it doesn't matter how big or little your sin is. If you've sinned and you've not accepted a salvation through Jesus Christ, you will live in eternity apart from God. That's otherwise known as hell. There is no love there. There is no care. There is no um, uh, good things there because all good things and love come from God. So if you're living apart from him, that is a place you do not want to be. It's not a party zone. Uh, so uh, pay attention for those of you who think, it, you know, hell is a place where they're going to party. Uh, that's not going to happen, folks. It's going to be darkness and miserable and ultimate, uh, you know, torture. And it's not God torturing you. It's simply you deciding that you want to live in eternity apart from God, apart from all good things. You are saying, I don't want anything good in my life. I want to I want to live in darkness apart from God. Uh, so make the decision now for Jesus Christ, folks. Um, so interesting. Uh, let's, uh, you know, the next uh, high watch period is going to be the end of this year. I think the economic stuff is going to continue on. I still think we have a number of months yet. Uh, but things are getting worse. And this is going to be a kind of a slow bleed uh, into economic collapse, into war. Just like Ukraine has been a slow bleed. Months and months and months of ever-increasing artillery, machinery, technology, and money going in there and ever uh, more and more corruption in our governments. And we see it all through, you know, with the, with the judges and, and the juries and, and Trump and uh, the Biden family, etc. Uh, there's no end of corruption in all the governments. And then you talk about corruption, you talk about Korea, uh, Ukraine, my goodness, and there's corruption in Russia, and we obviously know there's corruption in China. There's, there's corruption everywhere, folks. Uh, Satan has... Um, you know, done well from his point of view uh, to confuse and deceive the nations. And that will get worse as we continue on and it will get harder for Christians. So, but the, the thing to look forward to is that we see Bible prophecy rolling up before our eyes. We know Jesus Christ is coming. We don't know when, but we're getting close to the time where we can say, you know what? I think, uh, I think we can start putting puzzle pieces together and have an idea of the timeline of this. So it may indeed be that the 2030 is a key piece, and maybe that is the end of uh, you know the last three and a half years, the end of uh, the wrath of God. Um, so uh, again, uh, you know where the uh, where the Lord returns there. So could the rapture be uh, 2028 uh, when you know at the midpoint of the three uh, seven year period? You let me know down in the comments what you think about that idea. And as we move along, uh, I think it's going to be very fascinating to watch. Look up for your redemption draws nigh. God is doing great things, powerful things. We need faith like never before because we're not going to leave this uh, planet. We're not going to leave this life with anything except our soul and our salvation. So don't worry about uh, money. Don't hoard it. Don't hoard things. Get what you need. But all, at the end of the day, the Lord will provide. Uh, if you have faith in him. So thanks for watching. I'll leave it there. We'll see you in the next video.